we back? <laughs> uh, I feel like everything is challenging today. Excellent connection. Okay, okay, okay. What about now? Looks great now. Let's see. Hmm. We're, we're got issues. Let's see if this is working. No, we, are we up and running again? Is it working now? Hi, you guys. Much better, right? Oh, this is so stressful. Okay, perfect. Public, you. Oh, people said it was you when it was them. Maybe that was what's the problem. Okay, works very well now. I've changed the settings. The stream setting is telling me everything is better. Oh, stream health, excellent. It's healthy. <laughs> okay, that was stressful. I think we're doing okay now. Slow mode for the chat. There is so much going on here that I should know. Hmm, hmm. I don't know how that works, so can't do a slow mode. Wait, uh, nope, don't know how that works. Well, we're gonna start decorating. I'm already exhausted, Christopher. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I need also the, for this, then the, the buttercream frosting. You can also bring a treat for Grim, because he can show all of his tricks for you today, I'm thinking. <sighs> yeah, I love the comments. <laughs> Nobody knows either how to do this. It's actually not like that difficult, but I just forgot that, that there were a lot of steps. And also, what settings to use. I don't know. But we're back now. So thank you all for being here. I shall do a quick little intro to anybody who just clicked on here or don't know where we are. And we live in our cabin on Svalbard. So we are on an island close to the North Pole. And it's also polar nights, which means um, maybe something, a tool. Yeah. Wait, I don't know what I've done by now. Uh, so it's polar night, which means that it is pitch black 24 seven. So we have absolutely no daylight, which is crazy but also extremely cozy it's my favorite time of year like today grim and i were on a walk and there were northern lights across the sky oh let me show you it was absolutely everywhere in all directions and my phone could pick it up so it was so much that my phone was like yep look it's not gonna be focused but you see that's a lot of northern lights that was today so we've had a few days with a lot of northern lights which is incredible it's really cold at the moment well not really cold but definitely colder so <laughs> so we've had minus 17 degrees let's see how much that is in uh, let's get it all celsius in fahrenheit so today was one fahrenheit there's a zoo down here so it's actually starting to get really cold, which we love. But it's been keeping our cabin quite cold as well. So it's always kind of like, it's great and a little bit cold. Can I also get the, the thing in the glass? Alla de sakerna? Yeah. Perfect. I gotta get comfortable now because I actually have to start doing my house because I feel like it's the perfect thing to do. I also have a really good idea for this house. Thank you. Okay, how for business and enough tricks? Grim's gonna show you now. <gasps> Is it time for Grim to do his tricks for Christmas? Stand up and do, oh, the time has come, guys. Okay, sit through the salad, see I'll do bottom there, okay. Pass? <laughs> Don't freak out, you got this. Okay, and the pass? Yeah, that's, it's too much. Sit down, snood around. Sit Oh, I see good. Such a little surface. Come up with that, say hi. Hello. Do you want to set the dog? Don't let me see what it's doing. Yeah. Perfect. Christopher's going to be a little bit by the computer to see what's going on and what. Wait, I'm going to 
uh, so we can see what you guys are asking us and also we can answer any questions and just hang out <sighs> why am i out of breath <laughs> it was a stressful time here with a live stream yeah look at grim see i heard okay i wonder how many of you are from america and how many are from europe but i feel like generally there's a lot of cold weathers going around there's the arctic weather front that hit america and i'm like i understand that it's like around minus 40 and 50 in like canada yeah it seems to be really cold yeah and i mean that is cold i think many people think that svalbard is colder than it is but we have the gulf stream the gulf stream which is the currents in the ocean that actually brings heat to us so we don't get the same cold that you would get on the same latitude longitude um, in like Russia or in Canada. So that's why we have milder weather. But still, minus 17 that we have now is like the way it's supposed to be. Okay, one second. I need to go and get something. Christopher? Yeah. Keep it all happening. Oh, it goes so fast. It's almost difficult to read. Yeah, I don't know how to do slower mode. Yukon is 55 minus Celsius. That's cold. That is cold. That is super cold. Yukon is so cold. It's I think, like, I haven't been in more like 40 or okay, it's just something focus. It's okay. minus Celsius. I'm gonna see if it autofocuses. Hello? No? No autofocus? Maybe that's not a thing on a live stream. Okay. That's fine. Because if I can do the. Uh, Ska jag gå förbi där eller? Ja, jag ställer det för att jag tittar på mig. Okej, jag är tillbaka. Next time we're gonna have a technician. I think next time we're gonna have to ask Jesper to help us. <laughs> This is so difficult to live stream. But yeah, so it's very cold everywhere, but it's not super, super cold here. But it's definitely getting wintry, but we don't have a lot of, um, a lot of snow yet. Okay, how late is it? Yeah, let's do like an update. So it's 7.36 here on Svalbard. So it's polar night, which means that we have two and a half months of complete darkness and four months of not seeing the sun. And we are one and a half months into it now. No, we're gonna, yeah, no, we're two months into it because we're gonna start to see the sun. No, one and a half, sorry. Because we're gonna start to see the sun a little bit by the end of January. No. Yeah, I looked at my. Uh, Not the sun, but. No, no, sorry, a bit, no, sorry, yeah. The sun a bit is of in light. March. Yes. Yeah. The sun is in March. Yeah. So it's gonna be. A long time till we see it and the Sun actually comes up, uh, above the horizon like on the 16th of February so that's when you know do you remember when we were at Camp Morton yeah that was cold yeah but we saw the Sun before we saw it in the village you know yeah yeah, so yeah. now I'm gonna do some progress here so today we're gonna do tiles okay, I'm gonna turn around here. but Do we have any questions in the comments? No, mostly Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Okay, so we are, Su I'm Swedish. Christopher is Norwegian, but he grew up in Sweden mostly. So we both celebrate on the 24th, but I think that's what you do in Norway also, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we celebrate on the 24th, which means that the 25th is actually not a super big family day. This is a day that you would spend with your friends or you would mm. go out partying. So I think a lot of people maybe get confused why we're like, it doesn't matter what we do on this day. But for me, like Christmas is like not over on the 25th, but it's, it doesn't really matter, you know? I go all in up until the 24th. That's the day that I feel like is most important. Some, this, yeah. Somebody asked if you can look, see if some web page for apartments for sale in Longyearbyen. I don't think we have we any. We don't have any. We don't, there's always, not always, but for a long time there's been like a housing crisis in Longyearbyen. So we have very little housing available. 
So the only way to really get housing is if you get a job here, you will get it through the company. Like right now, we saw that there's like one apartment that you can rent. Somebody posted it on Facebook. Yeah. And then they usually post it to the locals first because there's so many locals looking for housing. But you can check to buy on fin.no. That's the only place you can check to buy apartments or housing up here. Yeah, you can only buy apartments because housing and cabins are for locals. Yeah, also good to note. Like, we live in a cabin, but you can only buy a cabin if you've lived here for at least six months. Uh, and if you're a local or if you have some previous connection to Svalbard. So if you've lived here for 20 years and you moved to the mainland, you can still buy a cabin. Then you can buy. Yeah, because you, you provide. I don't know why, but it's, it's but I think it's good. They want people to buy it who live here and not people who want to like make money off it off of it. It's because we have so few. Yeah, we have another one who asks if it's dry in the in the cabin. Yeah. And in the winter time, in the winter time, it is kind of dry in that part. Okay. We have a super dry uh, winter. Uh, well, no, we have a super dry climate up here. Yeah. It's, it's like not like if you go to the mainland. Gothenburg, for example, I feel like if it's minus two there, it's a completely different minus two degrees than it's minus two up here because it's so dry that it doesn't go into your bones. That's how I used to, like usually say it. Do you agree? No. Oh. No. No, I'm reading here, so I'm... Okay. Um. So yesterday we had Christmas food. We had um, chocolate. Ribe, which is pork, so we have the pork and meatballs, and then a bit of beetroot salad, which was really nice. Yeah, not so bad. It was really, really nice to have some, like, the thing is in Sweden we eat the same, like, holiday meals for all our holidays. So for Easter we eat the same, and for New Year's, no, New Year's we do have a different menu, don't we? Someone asked if we celebrate with the families, and don't we don't do that when we're up here, if no. not our parents coming up. The thing is, my parents ask me each year, are you going to come celebrate with us? And I'm like, absolutely not, because <laughs> I love being here for Christmas. I love not traveling. I love hanging out, and that it's like cozy and quiet, and I make sure to see my family other times for the year. like. I just think this time is very stressful to travel and oh. we love, I love Svalbard during this time of year. So I stay put. It was a lot of Northern Light today. Yes. Not now, but earlier today it was a lot of Northern Light. And how I ended up here was I applied for a work and I wanted to try to live here and it was really good. So I stayed. Here. So that's how I ended up here. I wonder if we can get Christopher on camera as well. Let's see. So you can be visible, you know? Mm, let's see, let's see. Oh, someone got a thermomix for Christmas. Oh, really? Kalle, Kalle flower, that's good. Nice. Then you're- Kalle flower. Then you're almost, then you're ready for life. <laughs> So a Thermomix is the machine that Christopher uses for all his baking. Uh, for everything. Yeah. You can cook, you can uh, you can almost fly to the moon with it. <laughs> okay, you can come and sit here. Hi, Christopher, I have uh, the live stream for you here, so you can hang out and answer questions here. Okay. Because it would be really nice if you're in the, we can see you. Oh, if people are gifting, you can say thanks to them. Uh -huh. Oh, that's Which a good effect. Cool. Thank you. Uh, John. So fast, uh, yeah, Christopher, uh, did they ask how you ended up on Svalbard? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I told that. Good. And he's and been here for uh, 10 years now. Ellen asking where we come from. I come from, my parents are in Norwegian. So I come from a small place, Uppdal, in Norway. Then I moved to Sweden when I was five years old. And Cecilia, you're from Gothenburg? Gothenburg, baby! So Sweden. Uh, Sweden's uh, second biggest capital. But I spent most of my time abroad when I was younger. Um, well, younger in my teens. We moved to Ireland, our family, when I was like... Grim! 
when I was like 11 and then we stayed there for a few years and that was literally the best years of my life so I love that so I kept up the traveling thing and I traveled around the world I was in Australia for a year oh. okay I'm gonna tell you what I did I was in Australia for a year lived in Sydney study way too warm for me uh, uh, and the bugs I thought I was gonna die every day and uh, you know they were flying cockroaches it was you it was a battlefield of bugs every day so for anybody living in Australia you are you are a different breed you might say that we are no 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 what you go through with your bugs I could never do it I thought I was gonna die so oh wait up oh I didn't do this very well it's okay and then I lived in um, before that, I lived in Spain for a year when I went to school. Loved that. Lived in the Spanish family. Blanca. I miss you and your kids. And then... <laughs> it's going to be a long story. <laughs> then I was back in Ireland again for a few years. And then I was in London for a year. It was amazing. I did my best to just travel around and work when I was younger. And that's why I love living in a place like Svalbard. Okay. And the brand. Losh, say hello. Say, says hello. Hello, Losh. Hello, Losh. And uh, somebody asked what we're going to do for New Year's Eve. Okay, so I don't want to do... Do you want to answer this one first? What do you want to do? Yeah, you can answer. I have a tradition. On New Year's Eve, we hike to the top of Platåfjället and watch the fireworks from the top of the mountain. And it's, you can look above the village and it's absolutely beautiful. So I really want to do that again and I think if you I, I won't what but i want you to come mm. so i think if we're going to do that because also if we go out to dinner we don't really have anywhere to go with the grin we can't put him anywhere and we cannot leave him because if they do fireworks and we're not here his he will be scared forever he will he's fine if we're here but he freaks out actually i'm like yeah, don't like to do that yeah and i don't want to do that yet. but i don't have a like a big wish of going out to dinner i really want to hike though uh, yeah somebody asked if you can do a camping video and uh yeah we're not going to do a camping video because most of the people die when yeah. they do camping but, but do you know what video. we're doing that we are going to show i want to do a video of this i want to do a video as if we were camping but we won't because we don't want to die but i want to show the setup and why we don't camp because we need to get tripwire we need to get uh, everything to have like a camp safe for polar bears, which really doesn't exist. And then one person also has to be on polar bear duty. So if you and I were to go to camp, we have to sleep and be awake at completely different times the entire time. So, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a video of how camping would look like, but I don't recommend it for like anybody who is not very, very experienced. Right. No, no, not that no. that's because of the polar bears, by the way. It's not because of the cold. The cold is fine. It is because of the polar bears and the fact that they will definitely see it as a potential food place. Yeah. Somebody has been going on a snowmobile adventure. It is when the snow comes. So far, it, is, it isn't that much snow, so we can go. But we are just waiting. A couple yeah. of weeks more, probably. Then we'll be. Do you think so many good, weeks more? Good to go. Last time I, it, what I love is when I edit, I look through footage from different years. So I can always like see what it was last year. And last year, our first proper snowstorm came just after New Year's. And the year before was the same. We haven't really had a like not snowy uh, January for a long time. So I'm hoping it will be here soon. Okay. Thing. Where's the first place you want to go on a trip to? I don't know. It's dark, so it's probably going to be not yep. so far away. The yeah, boss could be nice. 30, 40 kilometers away from here. So yeah. Somebody asked if I do Lefse, and I don't do Lefse because I you don't have... You have to explain what Lefse is. Lefse is uh, some Norwegian... Potato bread? Bread, yeah. Thin bread made out of potato, very uh, Norwegian. Put sugar and uh, butter in it. You put cinnamon if you want. Uh, oh yeah, you make it sweet. Lumpe is the other version. Yeah. Sorry. I don't do that because that I don't have a tack 
Yeah, we, what, that's what we use when we do it. And that's a sort of pan. I'm just going to be here translating, yeah. Christopher. I want to have one, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's next year I'll buy one. Okay, I'll have to, yeah. Christopher makes a lot of other really nice things. Yeah. Oh, he baked... Yeah, you saw us baking. Yikes. There's a reason why I'm not drinking any malt wine today. <laughs> <laughs> But I had, I don't think I've laughed as much as I did doing that baking in a very long time. So I, <laughs> I had a great time, must say. Mm. I mean, Do polar bears, but yet they hibernate. Hibernate. They hibernate. They actually don't. No, it's only the mother. They den, but they don't always den. Yeah, so regular day. bears go into hibernation, right? And for winter they sleep, but polar bears don't. So, but it's only pregnant mothers because do they have babies now? No, they have babies. Well, they probably come soon. Soon, okay, yeah. So pregnant mo mothers would maybe den, but it doesn't mean that they go into hibernation. They just kind of den for a little bit, make up a layer. Sure. So how yeah, we can. How many hats do you have? Oh. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> so many, that's, so many good ones. That's. Have you seen his uh, latest one? The one he's wearing now is uh, he made it himself for the boat. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Dream come ahead. How often do you see Northern Lights? It depends, but uh, almost every day. No, that's a if lie. You, if you look out. <laughs> well, no. I would like it to be that way, but it really isn't that way. I'm sorry, Christopher. But I am the Northern Lights hunter here in the family, <laughs> so I'm going to say it how it is. We have not had a lot of Northern Lights this winter so far. Well, the thing is, okay, let me, Northern Lights are situational. And what I mean by that is that they pop up at different places. So depending on where you are, there could be or could not be any Northern Lights. And since I rarely, look at this roof, but I usually just kind of like walk outside the door and take photos of the Northern Lights there because otherwise I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time looking for them. So it really depends. But what you can, you can see Northern Lights at all, every day. It's possible to see it because it's dark. But then it depends on solar storms. It depends on the weather. If there's a lot of um, clouds, you can't see because you can't see the sky. So it really is a lot of different factors. But like today, now that it's so cold, we've had really, really good northern lights. And I guess that's because of the particles that come down from the solar storm that then react to the particles in our atmosphere. And that's created a lot of northern lights these last few days. But that's because of a solar storm. Thank you for my coming to my TED talk about northern lights. Somebody asked if the cabin is well isolated. Mm -hmm. Come, honey. The new cabin is incredibly well uh, insulated. We have triple glazed windows on the new cabin and we have double glazed on the old one. So you will notice a big difference in the new build and the old build. And also where we connected the cabin to the old one is a little bit of a weak spot. So, but it's definitely, yeah, it's a really good isolated cabin, yeah, insulated. Good. We it don't fine. freeze often. Like the coldest it gets is, you know, it depends on what we do. We are very lucky to be able to just have our wall-mounted heating unit. Oh, look at you, Green. Look at you, huh? Yeah, it works good. At least to like minus 15 or 20. Oh, hello, Green. So sad. Also, look at the fur. Look at this. He is so dark this year. So he's starting to finally get his winter fur, which means that he has this mane. Oh, look into that. Oh, very difficult to work with. Yeah, so he has his beautiful face. How about that? Yeah, look, where he looks like a raccoon. <laughs> I have some family in Sweden who says hello. Malin. Your family? Hello. Yeah, it's from my... Nem nem, hey Molly, say you greeting. Oi, kolla på dig. You having a good time? Du får lite mer godis här här för en cirkusappa. Okay, look at this so far. 
Är det Kristoffer Luck? Ja, Luck är I love what stuff. The thing is, so I realized there's a lot of realizations in my life as I get older. And one of them is that I am not good at teeny teeny decoration thingies. Like I think that I'm gonna be like, oop oop oop. No, I need to do construction. And that is why I won this year's gingerbread competition. I'm out, I've outdone myself. Help me help you. Come also, I have so many things to show you guys. This. If you didn't think the magic existed before, look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's one. This is seriously the best thing Christopher has ever bought. <laughs> So this year for the Christmas calendar in Norway, which is like a series they have every morning, they have this called, it's called Snowfall, and it's about a village up in the sky where Santa Claus lives, and this is how he would make a wish to the kids. So Christopher bought the actual merch from the show, so it even, it even says Snowfall here, and what Chris, the Santa Claus would do is he would blow at this and if it lit up the wish has been sent to the kid I'd like a car next year, please. Thank you <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna keep this here. I might have to amaze myself a little bit more Oh no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? We're trying to find Christopher's phone here as well I love that, yeah. It's also, according to our Santa Claus, uh, what? No, according to our legend, Santa Claus lives in the village, never forget. So, but I mean, doesn't he actually live in Finland? This is just a holiday home. Huh. I don't know. I think Santa Claus actually does live in Finland. But you know what? We're happy to have him here when he wants to, you know, go on holiday. I'm not gonna uh, go to YouTube. But what's on the screen now? Alright, so we're gonna do this side. I am so excited for it to be a new year soon. I'm one of those people who love new beginnings. Probably more than things like... I don't know, I don't really look backwards and, and I'm not like a red... Well, I don't... What am I trying to say? I really love new beginnings. I love Mondays. I like when Sundays end because it's the start of a new week. They like it excite, excites me. So I'm very excited for this year to end and to start a new one. You know, I don't have any goals. I don't do that though. Do you do goals? No. Like my only goal in life is to be happy and not be stressed. I think that's like the only one. I want like to chill and hang out with Christopher and Grimm and live the good life. And then I'm happy, you know? Yeah. Somebody asked summer or winter? <laughs> winter. All the time. I do love like a tropical vacation to Portugal. Love that. But I always look forward to coming home. Do you know what like a vision of the perfect day is to me? It would be, it's crispy in the air. It's like, let's say five degrees Celsius. I can put on an outfit with like stockings mm. and boots highly vibes with stockings and boots. It makes me very happy. And it's like crispy in the air. You can drink a coffee. You can wear, you know, semi-outdoor clothing. Love it. That's what I love. Summer clothes, no, 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 no. I don't, no, does not make me happy. Summer in general, hmm, it's hot. It can be a bit hot. But you kind of like summer, don't you? Yeah, I like the summer here at least now. Yeah, but that's that's not a summer. <laughs> that's six degrees. I love summer here. But do you like hot summer? I think you do, don't you? I think Portugal is quite nice in the spring. Yeah. Oh yes, when it's like twenty degrees in like April or something. Like Sweet summer or Norwegian summer. That's okay. Yeah, that's true. I think I'm gonna have to need some more pieces, sir. Hmm. There is hope. Maybe I might be able to get this to work. 
So right now, if anybody's joining after we've hung out here for a little bit already, it is almost 8 p.m. And we are on Svalbard, an island close to the North Pole. And we're right now in polar night, which means that it looks like this. It looks like I'm pointing the right way. <laughs> Pitch black. Pitch black 24-7. So Christopher, how do you feel like this polar night has gone? Do you feel any sort of like, do you feel that polar night is affecting you in any way? No, not really. I like it. Me too. I feel the same. Last year I was very stressed, wasn't I? Yeah. And that's when I felt like for the first time in seven years that the polar night affected me like negatively mentally and that's never happened before. But this year I really don't feel that. And I've had a very like eventful start of the year. No, no uh, end of the year. So I've had a lot of like things I've been doing, but I feel like we have a good way of going about it, don't we? A lot of focus on, you know, being happy. A lot of communication. <laughs> it's important though. This, this dog season is going really fast. Oh, too fast. Yeah, I agree. I'm almost sad that it's like the end of December because I just don't understand where the time went. But it also makes me excited for January because sometimes January can feel kind of long. You know, it's five weeks almost of this darkness, but now I look forward to it. I'm like excited about the last parts of this season and I want to hike a lot more and I want to get you to hike with me, Christopher. No. I want to go to Trollstien and that's a hike I kind of won't do alone this year because I haven't been up there. It's a hike that goes over glaciers uh, and I usually scout it out in the summer but I haven't done that this year which means that I don't really know where to go <laughs> without falling down a crevasse. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that one alone this year but it's an amazing hike. Good. It's an emergency. Mm -hmm. I need, could I order from the tile shop some more white and some more pink. Uh, yeah, I can do. I can do with only white. Thank you. Ooh, what's your favorite thing to eat, and what can you not buy in the store and you miss a lot? This is so such a conflicting thing for me because I like. I don't really like food in that way that people are foodies, you know. I really, really enjoy beverages though, and non-alcoholic ones. I'm a very much about a beverage. I like a coffee, I like a matcha. So for me, my joy is usually in a cup, in a glass. I like to sip on things, not much of a snacker. But when it comes to food, I have had a love of goat cheese for a very long time, very long time. And I only, re oh wait, this is wrong. I only kind of remembered that yesterday when I said, wait a minute, goat cheese is very nice because that's something that we don't really have up here, like the nice ones. Can I help you? Great, can I help you? It's gonna come a Do you wanna show a trick soon again? Grim's gonna show you a trick soon. But so for me, I think we have a really good supermarket up here right now. And the prices also, after being in America, I've realized that the prices here are comparable to like America, it's comparable to Sweden and Norway. So that's kind of nice mentally to know that it's not more expensive here, which means that we can't complain, which is really good because that kind of gets you in the mindset, you know, good. I feel like, but I also feel like we have a really good supermarket. Um, so I'm happy with that. You're running out of firewood. This is actually our last firewood. So we're gonna buy a pallet and I think we're gonna have to buy it soon. But we want there to be more snow so we can snowmobile it down to the cabin. And what we do is we buy a whole pallet of it. So how many do you sick get it here? So like 30 or 40 bags of wood. They come individually. Last year they came in plastic, wrapped in plastic, which we feel is a crime. So they changed the company and not using that one again. They also came without bark. And <laughs> if you've been on my videos lately, you know that I've been raging about this firewood, but it's so important. But so we don't have any trees on the island because we are well above the Arctic tree line, Grim. Nothing grows here. So Grim does not know what this is really. Like he hasn't lived with trees for seven years. So when we came in with it, he was like, 
hmm, I wonder what this is. So we are gonna get some more firewood soon. Soon, soon, soon. Plastic, it is a crime. Imagine wrapping wood, firewood, in plastic bags. We thought it was a joke. Everybody was like, what? So yeah, it usually comes in nets, which is a lot more manageable. So I've lived here on Svalbard for seven years now. And Grim, are you okay? Do you want to talk because I'm talking? What's good to see you? What's good to see you? Can I walk up? Huh? Can I do something here? Stop. Sit down. Just hold it. Depends on what. Don't look at the phone if it scares you. Move over to safe zone. Hi. We're gonna have to get some some sweets for Grim to motivate him to be here with us. <laughs> okay, okay. Book recommendations, some cozy books. The thing is, I don't really read cozy books. I read very various books. I feel like I have so much cozy in my life when I oh when I look at YouTube and stuff like that, it's usually cozy. So when I read I usually go for gory. It's the same with podcasts. The more murder, the better. And I, I don't know, I think it balances my, my senses out of like what I'm, sorry, experiencing. But so for cozy book reads, I do love Marianne Keys though. I mean, anything she writes is just nostalgic and amazing. So Marianne Keys for like chiclets. But I mean, I am mostly, kind of doing like reading fantasy though is that cozy no they're not cozy but the um, a court of thorns and roses series is incredible um but for books i don't know when it comes to cozy i can't think of a single one but i can't think of a lot of other books that are really nice oh i would love to, do you know what i had like a dream of I wanted to do a podcast the way they do murder podcasts, but on like ghost stories and scary stories of Svalbard. The thing is, we, we only basically have like polar bear murder stories. I don't know how that, well that's going to sit with people, but we don't, I don't know of a single murder here. Do you know, do you Christopher? No. I don't no, like, no. I don't know if there's been one. We don't have that. Yeah. No. So that's good, know. but that means that there's not a lot of stories to make. But polar bear happenings. <laughs> you see, you're just gonna have a dentistic, like a lot of dentistics today. I thought maybe a, a smaller treat. Hmm. Let's get to the story. I think we can talk about the treats, huh? Grim's had so many treats these last two, few days, but it's been pretty good. It's been more kind of like meaty, not natural stuff, but let's just say his stomach is gonna have to chill. But he's usually very good with uh, like anything that he gets. He doesn't get very sick or anything. But he also gets a lot of exercise. He gets us out of his system. Very right. cool. Okay. This is coming along really nicely. I don't think you can see the greatness, but I can. I can see the greatness. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have uh, Troy asking, how do you like your new sliding doors? Well, yeah, what do you think? I think they are really good. We just, we just want to find the color. Oh, I forgot about that. So uh, for anybody new, he's talking about the barn doors that you can see right there. The <laughs> it's really hard to point the above CRISPR. And what I loved when we did this video, I noticed that it was like 50-50. People were like, oh, I don't understand why you got them. And the other was like, oh, this is amazing. But I think for us living here, it's a really good solution to separate a space that is otherwise completely open. I'm, I'm very much an open plan kind of person. So for me, I love that everything is open. But we noticed that if Christopher couldn't like, or if we couldn't close a door behind us somewhere, it was kind of taxing being in each other's space everywhere. Like I have the office where I can close the door, but also for Christopher to be able during the day or whenever he wants, because it's mostly, he's mostly in there because I'm in the office, just to be able to close the door behind you 
is very nice and it's very good for like just peace in the house and like mental health to be able to have some privacy even though you're just like watching tv or chilling and also during the summer it's very much for the midnight sun because we're gonna have four months of midnight sun and where everything is open like the whole house so i love them so far also that it became for us a very cheap solution the other options that we had do you remember the option when we built the house or the cabin that cost ten thousand? We had one option to put up those kind of like super good looking black paint, uh, like metal things with windows. Ten thousand dollars. That's a lot. So I'm very happy, and I think Christopher's also very happy. I hope so. Oh my gosh, this icing is gorgeous. Oh. Christopher, do you have a favorite book? Uh, I said it before. Hold on, so what? That's the only one. Oh, I it can. is your favorite. That's a good one. The Year of the Hair is what he said. You have no. You can money. Thank you for anybody gifting. So, so, so kind. Thank you. It goes straight into Grimm's tweet account. What, what's kind of funny is that we had a lot of Christmas presents. No, we did not have a lot of Christmas presents. The Christmas presents we had, though, were gifted from other people, and they were like 90% for Grim. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not very much a present person. I think that if there's something that I want to buy for Christopher because he needs it or he's been wanting it, I definitely want to get that. But for me, just cons like buying things without like... It can be very much about just consuming or buying things around the holidays, and I think that kind of loses track of what it's all about. You know? Yeah. Somebody asked, like, what animal do we don't have here? And it's probably easier to say what, what we have. have. Okay, yeah. Let's list them. Okay. Christopher, name an animal that we have on Svalbard. Fox. Walrus. Uh, polar bear. Reindeer. Uh, Patagaman. Patagaman. A Patagaman? A Patagaman. He meant a Patarmigan. <laughs> Uh, which is rype, uh, rypa in Swedish, also known as grouse, yeah, I think. Grouse as well. We have a lot of birds in the summer. Oh yeah. And not a lot of birds in the winter. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, walrus. We don't have a lot of, oh, we have a ton of whales in the summer. We don't, however, have <laughs> grim. Stop being Come jealous on. that we're talking to somebody else than you. Come back. Come back to... Yes. Yeah, lay down in the sofa. We don't have a lot of animals. We don't have any wolves. We don't have any elk. Um, we have arctic foxes. They're beautiful. The thing is, what's so funny with arctic foxes is I think they look so cute, but they're little assholes. I mean this in the best way possible, but they do mostly sit and scream. <laughs> but they're also very fascinating animals, you know? Like they're little scavengers. They're this big. They're so feisty. They're so fearless. No. I mean, a fox would take on a dog any day and not like even to fight, just to piss it off. Like they sit and scream and rim all day long in the summer. No. Where do the birds live? in small bird. Uh, most of the birds uh, come in the summer. So go. it's yeah, it's the classic they fly south for winter. Yeah. So we have one bird left I think and it's the Ripa. Mm. Do we have yeah, any have, other birds? Yeah, you have some more. The snow snow. Oh the little uh used yeah dom small sakana. Okay, so most birds fly south. Almost all of them. And a few ones stay. Yeah. And um, no cats, no. Yeah, cats are banned on Svalbard since 19, I want to say 82. And why cats are banned here is because they pose a very big like risk to the bird environment. And if you have had a cat, you know that they kill anything. The thing is they don't really have like anything, they don't have, what's it called? A purpose when it comes to killing birds, they just kill. So they could easily just wreak havoc on the bird population, and that is why. And I completely get that. It would be nice, though, if you could have, like, indoor cats. 
but I think it's because you know that they could get out and then they could spread disease, they could, you know, kill a lot of very valuable birds. Because in the summers, you will see babies everywhere. Like yeah. around our house, there are baby birds with their parents roaming freely everywhere. So it's not like they're not easily accessible. What's worse though, also in the summer, you can see when the birds come to take the babies. That's now terrible. But that's a part of their, it's kind of how it is, you yeah. know? So. Sylvia, very much question. How do you heat your house? Only with fireplace, in the living room. I understand that the AC don't work with so low outside temperatures. AC does work. Yeah. It works. I mean, it depends on what system you get, but we have what's called a uh, change. It's a värmeväxlare. So it goes from, you can have it hot or heating cold. Heating unit. Yeah, it's a heating unit that also offers you air conditioning or heating. But our system works in very cold temperatures. The only thing that actually makes it work not really great is when it's windy. And that's because it has to work harder. It still works, but the output temperature is a bit lower. Well, it works good to about like minus 15, minus 20. And then you lose, like, you lose power in it. Yeah. You don't get so much, like, you don't get the heat out of the unit compared to when it's warm. But so the air, the fireplace for us is for coziness and for extra heat. But it could also le also easily in like a, uh, what's it called? A power outage. It can save our house from freezing. And the only thing we would really be worried about is that the water system that we have, that's what can freeze. But that's only like a cabin system because we don't have any plumbing and we don't have any water. Mm -hmm. So we just have a cabin system. But everything works so far. We're having a good jam, but you know, you have to be careful. Damn it! If What's I, happening? Fire needs another log. Thank you. <laughs> Piping bags is so much fun. I don't know if I'm doing something great, but look at the root. See, this is your calling to next year use sugar paste. Look at this! It makes everything look so good. And now, like, I don't have to, you know. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so somebody's asking the same question. We hear you. Yes, it is exciting that we live here. Let's see. Yeah, I have to put in the user in timeout. Oh, how many cups of coffee do you drink daily? This is gonna surprise many of you, but Christopher, he's on a coffee hiatus because he's now gotten sick of the taste of it. I've been crying over this for days. <laughs> My coffee buddy is gone as I know it. The worst thing is that I'm also a little bit like, I don't know, we've had so much bad coffee lately that I think it's like ruined my taste buds. But we are now using our Mocha Master to do regular drip coffee. Not loving the drip coffee that we're using in it, so I think the taste is a little bit meh. But I don't really drink more than like two cups daily. Because when we do drink, but before when we sold our coffee machine, because we're gonna buy a better one, or a new one, and I would make like one latte in the morning, and then I might get another latte when I was in after workout, or so usually like two. But if I'm drinking drip, I could drink like two to three cups, but not that much. Mm. I kind of cycle around. I drink, I drink BCAAs every day just because I want something to drink. I like myself a beverage. And that's like a fitness drink with amino acids. It's not very exciting. Then I do maybe a matcha. I drink a lot of water. Is this a long answer? Mm. Okay. Somebody asked about vegan food up here. Almost every single restaurant has a vegan food option. Yeah, but it's only one option. Yeah, it's one so option. So if you're vegan and live here, I think you get, I get tired of the food and I but eat everything. Yeah, the thing is if you're vegan and you live here, you probably know the chefs and you can ask for something off the menu because they're very good at doing that. But also, yeah, they're not like the best options for vegan food, but you yeah. can definitely come here for vacation and get a good meal. Yeah, you know, and if you live here, you know, they're like the vegetables, going with the boat for many days and 
I don't know. It's not the best place to be a vegan. You have to get inventive, though. I mean, oh. you can definitely be vegan. We know lots of people that are vegan and vegetarian here. Yeah. But it's it's a normal thing. It's not like something's you know. We have a bunch of different people and different cultures and everything. We also have a cafe now that only does vegan treats. Ca- cafe Huskies. They chose to only do vegetarian, no vegan treats. So it's like raw cake and raw food. So I don't think that it's you know something that's not possible. I don't even think it's that difficult to be yeah. honest. Somebody asked about tattoos. If we can do, we don't have a tattoo artist up here. So if you're gonna, if you have gonna do that, you have to go to the mainland. But what we do have, we have guest artists that come every year. Uh, Svalbard is kind of becoming like a hot spot for doing, you know, cool concerts or doing uh, tattoo weekends. So right now we have a tattoo artist that's gonna come up next year. So what they do is they post on the Facebook page. Can you push me? Yeah, so they come up for, you know, a week or so, and then they put uh, their availability on Facebook so people can book. But we don't like to have a tattoo tattoo artist here, you know? And that's usually what it, the way it is about many things. Okay, what am I doing? I should do something else here. I'm not making this beautiful. If we have tofu in the summer, yeah, we probably have that. We do. We can buy that in the shop. We have tofu, we have halloumi, we have we have a really good store, you know? Yeah, we have a good store. <laughs> a lot of cheese. Yeah, and a lot of cheese, a lot of different things, because we also have people from all over the world, so they kind of cater to everybody, I feel. Okay. And then someone asked, are you allowed to grow your own garden? Yeah, you are allowed, but like you don't have the place for it. But look, like it's going to cost you a lot of money in electricity, and I don't know where to put it. We had a guy with a, it was called Polar Permaculture. He did uh, microgreens, and it wasn't successful. Yeah. And he had all the tools, and he got you know grants from the government. So I feel like if he didn't succeed, that's probably telling you a lot about that it's difficult. Uh, I think the electricity for him was. That was, a lot, yeah. I don't remember, but it was like 30, 40,000 Norwegian crowns in a Monthly. month. Yeah. So that was like, and he probably sold for 5,000. Yeah. So, it's uh, a difficult business yeah. to have up here. But, you know, but you can, a lot of people do their own like um, herbs and stuff under yeah. grow lights, but not like the smoking herb because that's not legal here, you know? No. Do you have a holy bee or do you have a cinema here? Annika says, yes. We do. On Wednesdays and Sundays, there is a cinema in the culture house. I think it's so cute. We actually get really early releases of movies as well. We saw Avatar the other day, the other week. No. And usually we get like the releases very fast. This one we got, I think, a week after the rest of the world. But it's really nice. It's a very good cinema. Oh, that's a good idea. Is there work for a professional musician? No. No. That's going to be hard. Yeah. You're going to be a poor man. <laughs> yeah. But with good music. A lot of we have like We have like disc jockeys, but they have other jobs as well. Yeah. We only have it like one day a week or two days maximum. Yeah. Yeah, there's no really... But what we have, we have really good music scene, but all of the bands that come and play come from the mainland, and it's like high... Act. We have Patty Smith and her band coming up this year. Yeah, this summer, next summer. That's crazy. We've had um, a lot of other ones as well. So, but if you do like music, I think you should come up here for the polar jazz or for the dark season blues. So to celebrate the dark season, which is polar night every year, there's a blues festival uh, at Huset, and that's actually a really cool happening. I worked that one year, and I thought it was one of the fun, uh, most fun events I've ever been to. But it's because I worked, and I thought it was fun to you know, be in the bar, slug out drinks. I don't think I would attend it. Krina, question for Christopher. Are are you more difficult on the quality on the food you eat in a restaurant as you were a chef? Oh. I don't know. You don't know? I don't, I don't think it's that fun to go out and eat. I, 
Sometimes it is, but... I feel like I'm more picky than you are. No. I'm not that picky, but, you know, I... I just keep it for myself if, if, it, if it's good or bad. Yeah, that's I, true. I, I, I don't care, like... Sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's good. Yeah, Christopher's not one to complain, which I think is nice. I don't either complain, but... I just go with the flow. No. But you're not, you don't really like going out that much. No. But that's probably because you like to eat your own food. Yeah. Wow, 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 guys. I think I'm eating more, I'm starting to eat all of the icing, but I'm doing it very happily. Look at this. I feel like doing this sort of construction is so my thing. Do you have any more pastry left? I would need a whole side for this side. Do you have some? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Is there a large group of senior citizens? What is the average age in Svalbard? I think the average, like the most occupied age on Svalbard is somewhere between like 25 to 50, isn't it? Or like 60 maybe. Uh, I would say the 25 word. to 40 is the most, but... I'm thinking about like how, how old are you when you have a kid, like a family. Yeah, maybe, that's actually true. But we don't have a lot of senior citizens because when you're finishing, when you finish work here, you have to be able to pri provide for yourself to stay here. So you won't get any support from the government, there's no aid in your home, there's no public transportation. There's no old people's home, so you can live here for as long as you can take care of yourself. And you're happy to do that. Anybody can come here and live here. You don't even have to have a job up here. The only thing you have to be able to do is support yourself. That's the only. You need to pay for yourself and be able to get yourself around. That's it. So we've had, like, we had one of the older residents move from the island a couple of years ago, and she lived here for how many years? 50? I think it was 49 years. 364 days. Okay, she so moved one day before she was 50. 50. And what I loved with, she walked everywhere. And Christopher, <laughs> he worked as a logistics guy for Huset, which is the restaurant she went to every day. And the walk up there is far. Like you walk uphill and then to Huset. So it's like as far as you can go in the village. But Christopher, he would drive his logistics truck every day. So whenever he saw her, he would like pretty much push her up into the van because it was so high and drive her to her lunch or like afternoon meal. And she had like 47 in shoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she was a really small lady. She was, I don't know, like 155 or something. And she's been walking small about crossing all over for the last 50 years. But she know that if you have big shoes, then you don't freeze. <laughs> yes. So the, she, it was like, oh, I, the, the, those shoes was amazing. I love it. Okay, what age do people retire? I think in Norway, retirement age is like 70 now, isn't it? Uh, 67. 67. Can you tell me how to eat a little bit of a little bit of pastry? Or a little bit of a little So I'm just ordering in the tile shop. I'm, I'm very... Somebody asks where this is bought. And this was bought from NRK. Got a no? No. No? I think you have to Google. I don't know where I bought it from. But Snöfje, Snöfall Julekula. Okay. I'll, I'll see if I can put it in the comment. It's like in Norwegian. You have to see if you can buy this uh, Christmas uh, ball. Come see. Let's see. Somebody asks how often we clean Grim. Uh, um, to keep like the house from smelling dog and what's so like interesting with Grimm's fur is he's not hypoallergenic per se but he's like he doesn't smell like anything whether he's like his fur is wet or not like he doesn't he doesn't smell like dog and I think it's very individual to what kind of breed you have what they're gonna smell like Grimm doesn't smell at all we really only wash him in like the summer and during the winter so for over like six months he does not get a single bath and that's because during the winter months they build up a resistance to the cold together with their fur their double coat and also like a layer of fat or grease what's it called 
on their skin that keeps it insulated. So you really don't want to wash him in winter because you're going to wash away the insulation that he's built up with his like fur. Um, and also, but if there was a reason why, you know, somebody pooped on him, I would definitely wash him, but we don't have to. He takes also like daily snow baths. That's when you see him like, he rubs his whole body in the snow, which means that he's like completely crispy clean every single day. And he spends so much time outside that any like dirt or bacteria, there's nothing because it just goes, then he's all clean. But so if there was a reason for him to be washed, I, I would wash him, but he's not gonna get a bath now until next year in June is the plan, or maybe May, depending on how dirty it gets them. But during the summer he gets, you know, every other day a wash down because it's so muddy and he can't walk around muddy, you know, it's not gonna be good for him. So that's a long answer to that one. you guys doing in here? Are there any banks there? We actually don't have a single bank here anymore. We had a bank robbery when there was a bank. That was interesting. Um, but we don't have a bank anymore. So we had one office that was um, from the Sparbanken bank. But they closed down last year claiming that they didn't have enough business here, which is very interesting because anything you, if you would need to set up some sort of like appointment, you would now need to go to the mainland and if you want to set up a bank account. So that made it a lot more difficult. We don't have an ATM anymore. We also really don't have cash. Before we used it like a, a bit, but now you, you rarely see cash. We don't have anywhere to get cash. You can pay with it. And I don't really know how people deposit their cash, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, now they're like trying to, uh, yeah, but they will have to take it. If somebody pays for cash, you have to pay. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that is true. Some shops say that we don't accept cash. It's because I don't know how they would deposit it. So that's pretty crazy. We have a police station. Um, we do. We actually have, wait, do we have a big police for Christopher's? Christopher, what? Do we have a big police force or is it like a regular police force for our town? No, it is about 10 policemen. Okay, we have about 10 policemen. <laughs> and it's about like 40, 40 or 50 total who work up in the police department. Oh, yeah, there are like 40 or 50 who work up in the police department. And that uh, our police are called Sysselmestern. They were called Sysselmannen before but they made it a gender neutral name so Sissel Mannen would be Sissel Man now it is the Sissel Maestro <laughs> probably not what they want to be called Mester Master wait a minute so it's Sissel Master I don't really know what Sissel stands for but what's really interesting is though we have our own fire department right and we're 2400 people in town but our fire department is equipped for a town of around 30,000 people. So that's well more than what we are. And why that is, is because we are so remote and we are so like on our own if something happens that they need to have a lot more resources than you would have in a small town on the mainland. Like one example is that there was an apartment building this year, this summer in town and that burned down four buildings. And what they had to do is the only job they really had there was not even to try, like to put that fire out. It was to uh, make sure that it didn't spread to any other houses because everything is built so closely. And if the wind would have been in a different direction, it could have taken, you know, a good part of the village out. So imagine being that person on duty that day. It was crazy. Everybody was probably on working on that. That's crazy. Uh, we're trying to answer as many questions as we can, but you know, they kind of pop up out of nowhere and then, you know, we don't see every single one. So if we don't get to answer yours, I'm sorry about it, but we're doing our best, okay? What's your favorite thing about your life? Okay, I really like that one. I think my favorite thing about like my life in general is that I get to live and kind of for each day as we do, but it's very much focused about like nature and 
living and being outdoors and just that we you know I lived in the regular city life before and every day in the city life was very much about I don't know I don't know what my purpose was I kind of you know went to somebody I went to a job and I did that job and you know it was for an income but now I feel like we're more living or I'm more living for the experiences and to see Svalbard and to see things every day do you know what I mean like every day is an opportunity to do something epic here or you know to see the northern lights it's so much more nature focused so I really think like my favorite thing about this life is just the focus on nature and living and it's very different living up here than it was living on the mainland you know I tried living in a city I tried doing all of that and I always felt like oh this is not where this is not what I thought I would do I don't know life takes crazy turns and I think it's very important to you know go through all of the different kind of things that you want to do you know I lived in the city I tried that out because I also really enjoyed it for a little bit but I don't know. I think my favorite thing really is just the nature focus and that we have a very peaceful and calm life up here. You know? Yeah. Seeing like the joy and grim space when we're out on adventures and I don't know, we're living it up. Alien Snow Monkey asks, do you guys have to worry about polar bears breaking into cabin? Uh, we, are, we, we don't worry about it, but we always, always, always think about, yeah. about, about, about it. It's definitely Can a happen. possibility. Yeah. But we don't really think about it that way, no. Because, I mean, it can happen, but you kind of, I don't know. We don't really think about it, do we? Yeah. It can happen, and if it would happen, that sucks. The most important thing is that we don't get caught up in a bear so that something happens to us or the bear. But also we have quite a lot of people moving around here in this area. So it would require quite a lot for a bear to kind of decide to go crazy on the cabin. Yeah, we live in the middle, actually like in the middle of the cabin field. So the cabin would not come here first. Exactly, the bear would have to go through quite a lot of cabins before it came to ours. Yeah. And it would have to have a very specific reason to kind of break through this one because we don't have any food like that's I don't know I don't, we, I don't worry about it but it's definitely you know a possibility okay let's see how do you get vehicles on the island we have a boat Norbjörn who's coming here every three times a month and on that boat we can take everything we want cars snowmobiles food everything so that's the short answer for that i actually bought my car in sweden we bought both of our cars in sweden so we drove it also life pack since i'm swedish i can buy a car in sweden very easily because it's just you know i have a swedish everything but so what i did is i bought it and also what's interesting is the cars in sweden are very much cheaper in norway and since the car's going to Svalbard, it doesn't need to be Norwegian because we're taking it out to a different place. In a tax-free zone. Exactly, we're taking it to a tax-free zone. So buying a Swedish car was perfect because, you know, I'm Swedish. But so we bought one in Sweden and then we drove it to Northern Norway. And then we put it on the ferry up, well, not the ferry, but the shipping boat up to Svalbard. And the shipping cost, I think, 600 bucks one way. No. Uh, it wasn't uh, cheaper because it was not the deal. I think it was like 800 million, 800 million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So that was like a life hack. But see, I got some questions here. Somebody's asking about kids. And no, I'm not pregnant. And we still don't know if we want kids yet. I don't want any kids yet. Um, because we have still so much to do. I think I have still so much to do. Um yeah i don't feel ready and i don't think it's about being ready i don't think you ever are but i don't feel like i want to i just don't want to have a kid right now it I would complicate life up here I, but the thing is i think life up here could be so much fun with a kid but i think that i have so much to do work-wise first that i want to feel comfortable in mm -hmm. i mean this whole thing is so new to us this is our second live stream which means that it's like our second christmas for real on youtube 
And somebody also asked that, like, you have so much, so many more followers now, are you coping? And it's kind of wild because I just feel so lucky to have the following that I do because people like you guys are so incredibly nice. And I just feel so motivated when I look through the comments and it's just fun. And I love that it's still fun at, you know, almost 500,000 followers. It still feels like my community and my people and that you guys are interested in what we're showing and what we're trying to do. So I'm coping very well. I also have very, very specific ways to cope with it also. Like I tell Christopher, when it comes to comments, if there are some stupid like comments that don't really make any sense, I ask him to take them away because I don't need to see them. If it's not constructive criticism and doesn't have a meaning for me or it's, it's supposed to help like be helpful and it's just mean, I don't need to see it. Thankfully, we get very little of those. And I think mostly comments help me, you know, steer my videos in a good direction where I can teach you something or I can show you something that maybe you're wondering about. But I just feel like we're very lucky and we have so much fun with this YouTube thing. It's definitely difficult to kind of juggle how much work you do and what it means in terms of like, when do you work? When should you not like? Because <laughs> you're kind of working all the time. But that I feel also is part of it. So. I don't know, I'm just really, really enjoying this. And uh, thank you all for being here. And I mean, we're here on Christmas Day, on small bar during the polar night, like hanging out with you guys. And I think just all we want to do is bring some sort of joy and some sort of maybe different perspective on life. And I don't know, I just want to show kind of like younger me that you can, you can live outside of the normal box and it can still be a very fulfilling life. It can be, there's so many different ways to go about this life. One thing isn't better than the other. It just, you have options. I loved living in a city when I did, and now I love living like this. Who knows what we're gonna do in five years? I don't care, it doesn't matter. We'll see. Yo, I'm gonna <laughs> try to take three My short question, answer. <laughs> three questions in one. The, someone asked are the black people. We have all kinds of people. And Somebody asked, like, can you move here if you're American? You can move here if you are from people. Wait, let me give you some stats on this, though. Uh, the reparti uh, recar what? Regarding the BIPOC, we have people from 40 different nationalities. Almost 50. Almost 50. So what we mean by that, since we're not part of the BIPOC, BIPOC or, like, LGBT community, we can't tell you how it actually is to be, like, how you are received, but we have a very welcoming community like as far as i feel when i talk to people and everything everybody feels very welcome maybe except to the government now but but we have people from all over the world because due to the svalbard treaty which is what decides who can live and work here if your country signed the svalbard treaty which is like from 1944 you can live and work here visa free so it's those countries, but it's like almost every single country that signed it. So any, it says that anybody from this country, and it's you know a list of this long, can come and work and start a company on Svalbard equally as anybody else. Yeah. And I think that's also why we really want to like tell you how welcoming the community is, is because there are so many people here. Oh, almost 50% of the village are from all of these other nationalities. So it's like barely 55% or something are Norwegians. So I think that tells you a lot about what kind of community it is. People come from all over the world to live here. Yeah. And then we have this one, are there homeless people? And that yeah. goes into the rule. Yeah, it goes into the root layer. Like you can come here. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you, you are. Exactly. You can come here. But if you don't have a work, you can't live here. And the Swiss semester, it's going to buy you a ticket home. Yeah, they remove you from the island when you can't support yourself. It's like yeah. you can never get to the point of homelessness because the one second you would step on the streets with your stuff, the Susumana and the government will show up with a plane ticket for you, probably buy you a hotel room until you can remove yourself from the island and they will just send you back to where you live. So it's very interesting. Like we have the... Um, What's it called? Journalist Mark Sabatini. He lived here for 10 years. He struggled quite a bit financially towards the end. People were helping him and everything, but he ended up starting to live at the camping grounds. 
that's when Sesaman has said, no, you cannot live here. And I mean, he did journalism in a really good newspaper up here that was in English for 10 years. So they really won't take anything into account. If you cannot buy yourself a home, you cannot support yourself, they will help you to go back to where you came from from the beginning, where you know you hopefully have a home. So it's pretty brutal though. So, but that's also, I mean, you couldn't really be homeless and live on Svalbard. You would die, you know, from the cold and polar bears. Like, it, it's kind of like a special sort of community up here with those rules. Well, no, because like all the people who live up here have a place. Ele- nobody comes from here, almost. Like We don't no- have an indi- indigenous population. No, most people move here. We have, of course, some people who are born here. Like even third generation, a few of them up here, but but they changed the rules of babies being born here also. So now yeah. you can't. And they have a like an address on the mainland. If you are from Norway, if you are from Sweden, you probably have a main main like address from Sweden. Okay, two good questions regarding this, and then we can move on to something else. So, do you get an allowance from the government just to live? And uh, no, uh, everybody who lives here just works and lives and makes their own. Uh, like we don't have any support from the government money-wise. We don't get. What is it? I'm on board. We get support for the government. So sign for that, or who? No, so bring for that. So bring for that. I'm looking for a word. You know, when you get government assistance for something, or they bring down the prices. No, this is a place for work where you're supposed to make money, and you know, there's no sort of assistance or money given from the government. But the thing is, most people who live here live here on an average for two years, and I think that's very important to kind of note, because that tells you a lot about how people come and go. You might come here with your family to work for two years, and then you move back to your mainland. A lot of people have houses on the mainland that they just rent out for a year. They do a year of like work or studies or whatever here, then they go back home. I still have my apartment in Sweden. Yeah, exactly. No sort of subsidies. That's what I was looking for, the subsidies. I think where, yeah. Let's see. Do you like Indian food? Yes, I like all kind of food. I like food. That's everything for me. Um, let's see. How did we meet? We met. Uh, when working at Huset. So when I moved to Svalbard seven years ago, I was supposed to stay here for a few months. That is what most people say. And I ended up absolutely loving it. I, my first steps on the island were like at the end of November. So it was absolutely pitch black. And I had no idea really about Svalbard or what it was gonna be like. I didn't really have a good idea at all. And then I just fell in love with this little village. It's so cute. and. What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I was working at Fuset, which is a restaurant and bank of all and everything. I was a booking manager and Christopher was working with logistics there. And we didn't really hang out at all in the beginning, like for a year or two or something. We did our own, like we didn't really hang out. Like we didn't, we weren't not friends, but we weren't friends. And then, well, one day we did start hanging out. I think it started when I had orphan Christmas, which is like what I like to call it, is when I was completely alone on the island. I'd, I was living with Olivia and Einar and Grim before he was mine and Fenris and I had the dogs only me for Christmas and I didn't really have anybody that I knew on the island so Christopher felt bad for me <laughs> so he took me on a cabin trip and that's how we became friends and then we started dating and the rest is history do you want to know a funny thing though the reason why we bought this cabin it's because we didn't have any other way to go we took a chance we had been dating for what six months one year we had been dating for one year we were living in Jesper's apartment in the village it was my apartment number seven I think I had to move every year because you know that's kind of what it's been like up here you don't know you don't have anywhere to live and <laughs> you get kicked out after a few months because somebody else needs it so we were living in his home and he was coming back to take it and we had nowhere to go and suddenly a cabin pops up for sale and we're like I mean, he'd been looking at a cabin. Yeah, uh, I was. Lo- I've been looking at a yeah. cabin for many years. For many years, he'd been looking at a cabin, but this was a bit out of your price range for one person, right? Yeah. 
And I said, let's go and look at it. It was very expensive for being so small and didn't have any running water, you know, anything. It was 2.4 million Norwegian kroners it was put on the market for. Now 2.6, which is so much. It's like 260,000 euros or uh, dollars. And we just said, what the hell? Let's go and have a look at it. There was not a lot of people who came to see it. And I just, when I walked in here, I was like, well, <laughs> I look forward to moving in. And we just put a bid in without even checking with my bank or anybody. I'm like, we'll figure it out. We need this cabin. And we just kind of said, you know what? Let's just take a chance on our relationship, see where this goes. Worst things comes to worst, we'll have a cabin. <laughs> and we knew you wanted to have one. So you know what I mean? The backup would be that you would buy it or have the loan or something. I don't know. Sometimes you just have to make some decisions and hope for the best. But I think also why we could do that is because we had the financial background to back it up. You know, we knew that this wouldn't kind of like sink us if it didn't go well. But everything went well, and here we are now. And then we made a an extension, which I, also another good thing we did. I have so much to say today. I'm so sorry. Should I stop? Should I decorate for a little okay, bit? Okay, someone asked, like, do you have university? Yes, we have. We have the UNIS and then we have like Folkhøy school. It's not a university. It's an auxiliary high yeah, school. UNIS oh, is a university. It's actually a really, really good university. Did you know? Yeah. And uh, someone asked, can you get married there? Yes. We can go up to Sysselmann and get married. I kind of think, you know what? I, I've been speaking about this. I'm going to put it out here for the University of Christopher. The thing is, I feel like I would be the one to give you a ring. I'll be like... Getting on one knee, honey. <laughs> I, I'm not, like, I don't want a wedding, but I feel like I could so do Susan and I want to elope when nobody knows about it. How nice would that be? And I want to rock up. The thing is, the most important thing is that Grim gets to be there. Nobody else, right? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the kind of wedding I want. But then at the same time, I also kind of want to be in front of a glacier. But I feel like you could just do that anyway. Because I don't want a white dress, I don't want a wedding, I don't want the party, I, like, I don't really want anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think why I would want to get married now is because of the legal. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have to sign a prenup. How do you feel about that? Well, good. Somebody asked, can you burn driftwood or only the stuff broke in store? We can burn driftwood. That's no stress. But then you also have to say the background. I'm just going to be his Google checker. So driftwood. We live well above the Arctic tree line, which means that nothing grows here. But what's very interesting is that every single beach is full of wood and trash from the rest of the world. So we get a lot of wood from Russia, and we get a lot of trash from about everywhere. The thing is, you can, of course, you know, save it, dry it, but just the, like, the hassle of picking that up and the cost of going to get it in fuel because we don't have it outside our door like for some reason it's also it depends on where the currents are so our beach line here doesn't really have any driftwood because we're not in the right current so it stops somewhere else on the way yeah no, it's, it's not the easiest no and uh also gonna no. Be full of tar. can you say hey to Val valerina hello <laughs> are you taking your requests here yes. for Somebody asked, where do you store your boat? Uh, on land. On, we have the boat on land, on a, on a trailer. In a small dock uh, How much? bay. <laughs> small dock bay, if you, try, if you <laughs> translate it. Small uh, it's, dock uh, bay. Small, small boat hamna. It's, it's where we have the boat do in the mean, summer. Yeah, the small, small boat harbor. Yeah, small boat harbor. Which is the harbor. Yeah, so the boat is there. Out in the minus, yeah, out in the cold. What so am I, I go there. Here? I go there a few times and charge the batteries. <laughs> Look at my house. I don't know what I'm creating, but it's satisfying my need to move my little fingers here. Can I put one cap belly to it? No. Is it uh, cars very expensive as well, but yeah. like your to you Toyota Land Cruiser. Okay, we gotta tell you about the Toyota Land Cruiser because this, it's a very expensive car in Norway. Life hack, Christopher found this car on our, um, what's, 
Craigslist, you know, on a our buy and sell page. How much did you pay for the car? Not that much. Eight thousand. Yeah, so eight thousand U.S. dollars for this car, which is a Toyota Land Cruiser. It was very old, very. It's a Toyota detailed. Land Cruiser one hundred. Yeah. If I may say so. Yeah, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> so, and then he sent it to his friend. Well, we went. No, your family went to pick it up. My mother and not. Yeah, he bought it without seeing it. And we bought, well, I bought it actually because it was in Sweden, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm the rightful owner, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but it was just because um, of the, you need the Swedish prices. But, and then he sent it to his friend to fix it up and take the rest away. And voila, badass car hmm. for under 10 grand. Yeah, in total, 10, more. 12. Yeah. It was a little bit more about it. Yeah, yeah it's a good car. It's yeah. working. It's a tractor. But buying cars in Sweden is a life hack if you are Swedish because in Norway is very, 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 very expensive. And I think it's because of the taxes, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But so his badass Land Cruiser. It, wait, how old is it? It's from 2000. It's from 2000. And my Toyota Hilux is from 2016. Oh, and yeah. it. 14? Yeah. Oh, 14. And it was one of those worker cars. What's it called? Like construction cars. It was from a construction company. So it, it's beat up on the inside, but Grim makes it dirty. We have no food services like Walt or Bolt. We do, however, have Svalbard Delivery Service, which is like a local version of this. They just, you know, call and buy the food and bring it to you. And it, it doesn't cost, what is delivery fee? Hutifem? I don't know. The delivery fee is something like 75 or like Not seven much. bucks or five bucks. So that is the delivery service, but they don't like to drive out here. <laughs> but you should just tell us no. <laughs> so sad. So if we want like a pizza, we have to go get it ourselves. You know, but yeah, we don't have like Uber Eats. We also don't have any fast food, you know? Oh my gosh, we've been going at it for so long. This is gonna be, an exciting live stream and also my house I'm gonna show you soon what it looks like the time is 2056 so it is 9 p.m. and we are having a good old time where did Grim go Grim <laughs> but we need his presence his presence we have a public swimming pool at the uh, yeah. oh well, my hands are so we don't have mcdonald's we don't have anything like that do you know what one person did the other day there was somebody who wanted a burger king burger so i think they put out on the facebook page that they wanted a burger king burger and somebody who's flying up here brought a burger king burger <laughs> with them at from Tromsø and then just went here. So it had gone on a plane for one and a half hours from Northern Norway. We speak Swedish at home because Christopher speaks Swedish even though he's got Norwegian parents because he grew up in Sweden. And Swedish and Norwegian are but <laughs> well, Grim has no choice. He has to come and sleep here. Go Get some yourself. treats for him. Oh my God, Rachel! Thank you for the beautiful donation to Grim's tweet account. Hey, he's like woken up. Where am I? <laughs> uh, I am fully Swedish. Fully, fully Swedish. And Christopher is fully Norwegian, but speaks Swedish, so it's a little bit confusing. We speak uh, Swedish at home, but we do quite like use a bit of Norwegian words now that we've lived here so long. In the beginning, I've, I've been very adamant to not speak what we call Svorsk, which is Swedish Norwegian. It's kind of when, like Olivia is the queen of Svorsk. I don't know what language she speaks anymore, but it's not Swedish and it's not Norwegian. <laughs> but so I'm trying to like choose a language, but there are many good words in Norwegian. Hey, Melina. We're, we are taking requests here. Christopher's met my parents, of course. He's been in Portugal with me. It's kind of funny though when we started dating and I come down to Portugal with this man and he has longer hair than me. He had hair, 
a lamp or what it's so dark he had hair down to here and that that light was actually quite nice but it's okay we're gonna have to do without it but okay back he came to portugal with me they had never met him and it was warm uh, so we had to wear summer clothes and christopher didn't like really own any summer clothes <laughs> and his hair was down to here so he had longer hair than me <laughs> it looks like i'm grabbing but it was a treat my mom was like okay uh yeah but i mean he's my boyfriend Svorsk, another word, Skavland Svensk. Yeah. Skavland Svensk, <laughs> That's yes. a good one. Look at this. Okay, so we have a pink side. Of, I feel like this is my calling when it comes to houses. This. Oh, this house is a pre-made uh, house that you just put together with sugar. Because, you know. We're going to next year do our own. Okay, I feel like I want to put some of these on. Do you have any questions? If I have, um, his daughter is a man of few words. <laughs> don't drop it, don't worry. This is like almost stuck to this. Oh, I like this. Do you get tired in winter? Um, I would say I get a lot more tired in summer, to be honest, because the winter is cozy. You feel like every time you wake up, you're refreshed. Every time you like, I don't know, when you go out for some exercise or anything, you feel like you've filled up with energy, ready for the day. In summer, when it's like the sun is shining all the time, you feel so drained. I do anyway. Like every day it's kind of like, oh, sunshine again. It's, it takes a lot of energy from you. Do you agree? No. No, that's okay. Uh, huh? I think summer is same, same good as winter. Like. Same good as winter. Because you can take the boat. But you, see, seven. you see, you are letting your boat. What did you think about it before we had a boat? I had a boat. Oh, you had a I boat. Yeah, it's Dan. <laughs> Christopher, he has. He's actually going to sell it. He has a little one that he calls the cod kitter. Hmm. A very very cool little boat. But now we upgraded. Yeah. We love. <gasps> it's a tragedy. Oh no. No, no, no. Everything is falling down. Okay, none of these. They're going back. Do you take turns shoveling the snow off the back porch? Or do you have room to do it? That's my job. Yeah, but most of the times it's so windy up here so we don't yeah. get any snow. It's maybe three, four times a year, like in the, wi in the winter season. Yeah. It actually sticks here. But generally any sort of like man, man, manual labor jobs I like to do. Because I love a good workout. So somebody, why can't you give birth there? There, it's you can you can give birth there, but they they send you down to the mainland because like our hospital is not equipped, equipped for birth. And if something happened with the baby or mother, then something really bad could happen. But if they are on the mainland, that we have proper hospital with everything they need yeah that's why they send them there so it's not um it's not illegal to no 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 it's before like uh two decades ago or one decade ago or something it was fine to give birth here but that's because they didn't really think about any other options i think i think they were like ah you're here it's gonna be fine but now to stay on a safer side and also because they don't have the what you need at the hospital if anything were to go wrong, like he said, you get sent to the mainland. And it's also not like they're like, oh, you have to go now, but you have to go by the airline rules when you leave. And that's why most people leave about a one month before, because most airlines don't take people uh, who are pregnant more than nine months or so. So it's depending on the airline's rules. Um, but it's not like anything, people are always asking me like, oh, but what about home births? But like, that's not, I mean, of course you could, but I don't. I haven't heard a single person choose a home birth because it's not considered the safest option. Because again, who is going to help you if something goes wrong? So if you would have a home birth, something went wrong, the hospital's going to be like, uh, uh, you know, can we? Do we have anybody on call for this? And then, then they have to send them down with a chopper or yeah. like a plane. ambulance flight, and that's going to take many hours. Um, 
So it's for your own safety, and I haven't heard anybody have a problem with this. They even pay for it. I think this is what yeah. amazes me the most most with universal healthcare, which we have in Norway and in Sweden. You will get you will get the flight and the where you're staying paid by the government during this time, which I think is very, very interesting. And it also makes it possible for everybody to have a safe birth since you don't choose to go to the mainland but they ask you to go. So I like that. It's a good system. Yeah. Cat on the what is the main language spoken there? Uh, it's the first is Norwegian and English. Those are the two that most of us speak here. Yeah. I love that this has turned into a Q and A. But I kind of like that. I mean, I could sit here and just like talk about anything for <laughs> an hour. But now I feel like we're at least answering some of the questions you have. And, you know, you will get an idea of maybe what you're wondering about. Christina asked how old I am. I'm 46. Yep, she's 46. Oh, I love this question. What's your uh, star sign? Are you, is Cecilia spiritual? The thing is, I'm not spiritual. I'm not very, I'm not religious in the least bit, but in some way I'm also very like, I believe in a lot of things because I feel like if I weren't to, the world would be too small. Like there must be parallel universes. Something happens after you die. There are ghosts, all of those things. I feel like hundred percent because I could just not, I cannot live in a world where I cannot see bigger than myself. Do you know what I mean? It would feel so small. The thing is, I don't think he agrees on me, but I've also, there, like, our last house in Sweden was haunted. <laughs> and if you've lived in a haunted house, you know what I'm talking about. There's no denying it. So I'm not, I don't say that I'm spiritual, but I guess I believe in a lot of stuff. And mostly because I feel like the world would be way too small if you don't. I love everything that has to do with manifesting. I don't manifest as in write anything. But I think what you put out into the universe, you probably will get back. But it depends on a lot of things. I also, it's, I don't know, it's conflicting. Because I feel a lot of people are dealt stuff that they shouldn't have to deal with. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think you get what you deserve in any way. I think the universe throws shit at you. Do your best with it. I don't know. I don't know. See, it's too, much, it's too big to talk about. Uh, the lost. What, what is your favorite fish to eat? Like the questions Christopher chooses versus mine. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just tell you about my favorite fish recipe? <laughs> oh, yo, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> like for me, I think it's better to eat a fresh fish, fish, than to eat a frozen one. So it doesn't really matter. Of course, I I think like cold then. Hell, but um, Arctic char is like really nice fishes, but as long as it is fresh, most of the time it's really good. And best recipe, <laughs> I like everything from fried to boiled to, I think there's so many things you can do. Actually, but a nice recipe if you want to eat like uh, I like like fish and ship style because like it's easy and goes fast and it's a little bit junk food so it's nice to have it up here because we don't have any junk food here. We can eat a burger, that's about it. But if you want to eat any, we don't have like that much like hamburgers or pizza or whatever it is. Like so, 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 so. Somebody asked again, I'm 46. Uh, is Sweden or Norway or Norway cheaper? Uh, Norway uh, is way much more expensive to live in than Sweden is. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Svalbard is something mid between, I think. Yo. 
Who wants to come up? Okay, somebody asked, do you read non-fiction books, Peter? What kind of books do you prefer? I don't know. <laughs> I just read books like... I don't know. I don't know the English word for it. <laughs> I only work like Swedish and Norwegian word for everything. But I like like uh, Shantaram or like this. Like I don't know, Hor the the year of the uh, horn and sword. What is that? The year, the year of the the year the year, the year of the hair. That's a good one. Okay, is it is it time for Grim to have his intermission? Is that what it's called? When he has a show, you know, when there's like a middle show. Grim, are you gonna show your draw yeah, then a best that takes? The thing is, I taught him how to play dead, but it depends on you know what he wants to do. Okay, see. We need to do it closer to the video, okay? Come with me. Hey, come. We'll move the house. There. Now is your time to shine. Oh, that's perfect. Yes? Okay. Um, you can't go ahead and do the trick. Sort of. Oh, that's... It's not right. Does bang? He probably won't. <gasps> bang! That was not a pun, but you know what? I'm not gonna force you to do something you don't want. Okay, this trick. Look at that little sweet heart. Oh, he is so good at tricks. The thing is, I need to I need to teach him something new. I taught him pang, which is you know bang and lay dead, but he hates going on his back. Yeah. So, you know, I try to avoid forcing him to do it because, you know what, I, I just feel defeated. That's the, that's the truth, but he doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to have to find a new one. I wanted him, oh, now I remember. There's one where they go like this. I'm going to do that one. Can you even come with me? Come, come, come. Show off your s beautiful figure, Mio. Your, your winter. Oh, Sonia. Oh, you can kill. <laughs> you have to hype him up. Oh, yo, yo. You're beautiful. Oh, so I think this is it for today, Christopher. Mm -hmm. And for this year's live stream. I'm wondering if maybe we should do like live streams a little bit more often than once a year. I feel like, oh, do you know what I want to try to do? When I've learned how to do this live stream business a little bit better than today, I'm going to do a Northern Lights live stream because that's something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. But for today, this is going to be the end of today's live stream. And we just want to say thank you so much for being here and for supporting our channel and, you know, for being all oh, you being as kind as you are and you know just for being here we really enjoy this and being able to share Svalbard mm. and everything that has to do with living here and just showing you a different way of life so oh I love that thank you so much to all of you this has been a long live stream our record but so lots of love and if you don't have family around you today, remember that a lot of other people love you. We do. Grim does. <laughs> did you see what he just did? Sir, are you in the Christmas tree? <laughs> He's all... <laughs> he just put his face in the Christmas tree. But so just remember that we love y'all. And we're so happy that you, would wanted, uh, that you wanted to spend some time with us together. What? Today? <laughs> and it's just been very, very lovely. Can you show off Grim's beautiful body while I go and turn this off? Because I don't know how to do that. But thank you so much. All the love. Have a really, really good day. We'll see you next week in our video, which we don't know what it's going to be about. I think there's going to be a lot of Northern Lights in it. It's probably Grim's beautiful body. 
But we love you so much. Thank you so much. Let me show you the magic again. <laughs> you can hold it. I'm Santa. Love y'all guys. Merry Christmas. Hold on, I'm forgetting my Merry Christmas, everybody. Jag gratis grim. Jag gratis grim for Merry Christmas. Why are you so excited? Yeah. Okay. Bye bye.